All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this ASUS model GA503Q or GA503QR-211.ZG15. <clears throat> all right, so first thing we're gonna do is remove all the screws from the bottom. So we're going to use a PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver to do this. Uh, my customer actually told me that they lost one of the screws, so if you see an extra screw that I didn't remove, then that's why. All right, anyways, we'll remove all the screws. You wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do it is I put the flat side down like that. On my desk, in the pattern, I remove them. So I'll go by rows like this, <clears throat> and I'll put them in those rows. All right, so we'll go four along here, and we'll just continue down the rows. Uh, if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If this video helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. And other than that, um, hope you enjoy. All right, so let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. <clears throat> so that one screw was a little bit shorter. This screw's a little shorter. So it looks like the middle screws are shorter. All right, I don't know if the customer mixed them up. So again, if your screws are different, keep that in mind. All right, it's looking like all the outer edge screws are longer. All right, so now we got four more down here. <clears throat> I think if I remember correctly, they said they lost one of the battery screws. And I think all these screws down here are also shorter. Yep, so far it's looking like it. So only these around here are longer, and then the center ones are all shorter, just like the ones in the front. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get this bottom cover off with a suction cup. Alright, so... Now I'm going to use a suction cup here and see if we can pop this off. All right, I'm gonna hold down here on the edge and it looks like it comes out pretty easily. So we're gonna continue going over and again, just working our way over with the suction cup. If you don't have a suction cup, you can actually just use some pieces of tape, just tape them and then have them meet in the middle and you can use it as a pull tab to pull it up. But there we go, came out really easily. And here you can see underneath. All right, so the customer spilled some liquid on here. I'm basically gonna take it completely apart just to check if there's any liquid residue left inside. Um, the fans look pretty bad, so I'm actually gonna clean these out. All right, but before I do that, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. All right, so to disconnect the battery, there's this metal latch that you need to slide back here. Okay, just slide it back just like that. And then we're gonna lift the connector out. All right, I just use my fingernails and just pop it up just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to clean out the fans and I'll be back. So here you can see how bad it is. All right, we're gonna clean that out and we'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back, cleaned it out the best I could. <clears throat> so apparently they said water was actually coming out through the vent, the air vents. So some of the dust actually got caked on it. So it was really hard to get it out, but I did what I could. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna actually uh, drain the power from the board. So after we disconnected the battery, let's go ahead and open up the computer. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press and hold the power button for 15 seconds. This will drain any residual power from the motherboard and make it a lot less likely to damage any components. Actually, probably should have tried turning it on, but because they said they spilled liquid on it, it's always a good idea to open up and check that nothing is shorted out before doing that. So I'm not 100% sure if the computer will boot right now or not. Um, they did tell me like when they brought it to me that it, it did turn on. So anyways, let's go ahead and remove all the screws from here. So the battery looks like it's held in with three screws. So we got one all the way over here. Okay, again, keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. Don't want to mix them up and then damage anything. Okay, so I guess, yeah, so there were four screws. It looks like they lost the one that was right here. Okay, so again, if yours looks different, that's most likely why. All right, so this laptop has a M.2 uh, PCIe NVMe SSD, and then um, it looks like there's only one stick of RAM here, so that's kind of weird. Anyways, let's go ahead and pop the RAM out. So just pop it like that. Man, this thing is like so crackly. 
All right, so the RAM is PC4 3200 AA. So as long as you get PC4 um, 3400 AA, you should be fine with the RAM. If you decide to use different speeds, then sometimes it might not work, all right? So keep that in mind. It looks like there was some liquid residue here. That's probably what's making the crackling sound. So I have my knee against my metal desk, so in case you're wondering, and then I'm just gonna wipe these connectors off because it has that residue on it. I might have to use some water here. All right, so I'm gonna actually get a paper towel with a tiny bit of water, and we're just gonna wipe off the residue because we don't want it to um, cause any issues if it's going and completing some circuits. So, all right, just a little bit of water on a paper towel like this. I don't know if you can see that brown streak there across the paper, but there we go, wiped it off. Came off easily. Make sure to dry it. Again, I'm keeping myself grounded so that there's no, uh, a lot less risk of any damage while working on this stuff. Guess you can't say no damage because it's almost impossible to have un like no nothing at all. But anyways, that looks clean, that looks okay. We're gonna use the toothbrush and just brush the connectors to make sure everything's good. All right, and then we can go ahead and put this back so it's not making that weird crackly noise anymore. And we'll just click that back down. Oh, it's being a little bit difficult to click in. Get that and click that in place. There we go. So I don't know why there's only one stick of RAM, but there is, all right. Let's go ahead and disconnect or remove the battery now. So we took all the screws out, here you go. Battery model number, is there one here? C, I don't know if you can read that, so tiny, C41N2013. So that's the battery model number. There you go. All right, we'll set the battery aside. Okay, so we can see all in here. It looks like there was some liquid residue in here as well, so I'm gonna clean that off. I don't know if you can see that brown stuff here underneath this cable. Um, it doesn't look like it's coming out, so I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and try with a little more water. Oh, it's just rubbing off the, the label and everything. So I guess we can't really clean that well. All right, so let's go ahead and start disassembling everything here if we need to. Um, M.2 SSD, very easy to remove. Just the one screw. All right, once you get that screw out, lift it up slightly. It looks like there's a thermal pad underneath, so you wanna be careful and do this very slowly. All right, lift it very slowly. And there we go. Now you can go ahead and wiggle and pull this back. So if you lift it up really fast, you could snap the SSD in half. So you want to be very careful. There's also some liquid residue under there. So let's go ahead and clean that off. All right. This looks okay. So there's a lot of like liquid residue and stuff in here. So let's see. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if the computer's okay. I probably should have tried booting it up, but my customer said it was turning on, so I'm gonna go ahead and trust them. I don't know if you can see that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Sometimes after leaving it sitting, it gets worse, so I don't know, but here you can see there's that crusty stuff there. We're gonna try and brush that out. All right, there's a lot of, okay, we got a little bit of that thermal pad came out, that blue stuff that was sticking out over the edge. Look at that and throw that stuff away. All right, so I don't know. This stuff isn't really coming out. It's a little bit burnt looking there. So we're gonna have to be careful. I'm using a paper towel with a tiny bit of water on it, just enough to kind of get the residue out. Again, you do want to disconnect the battery and press and hold the power button to drain the power to make it safer to work on like this. All right. Or if the blue stuff is coming out. All right. So I'm just getting a tiny bit of the water in there. And then we're gonna use the toothbrush and kind of break up the residue there. That's just so you don't have any um, components that are shorting each other. So you don't want the liquid residue to connect these in ways so that the electricity can jump across the components. So that's the main reason we have to clean up the residue. 
All right, so that looks okay. All right, let's go ahead and start disconnecting things now. So we got the keyboard connector here. We're gonna flip this latch up. All right, that black latch. Once you do that, you should be able to pull the cable out just like this. There's not much slack. All right, trackpad or touchpad here. Flip that latch up. Once you do that, you can go ahead and pull that cable out. It might be useful to grab the blue tab and pull it. All right. Then you got the keyboard backlight connector here. Flip up the latch there. Grab the brown tab, pull that back. Go. Then we got this little light sensor. I don't know what this is. It says hall sensor debug. Oh, this is probably debug, debug. And then there's the hall sensor. So we're going to disconnect the hall sensor. I don't know what a hall sensor is. I'll have to look that up. But, um, there we go. All right, I think that's what a lot of the computers have and I didn't know what it was. I see a connector going to like a tiny little board like this one. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and disconnect the speakers here. So there's the speaker connector. I just grab the wings with my fingernails and just wiggle, 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 wiggle. And there you go, it pops out. All right, and then you got this tweeter something something so that's a speaker I guess but I don't see where the speaker is anyways this thing is really tiny so I'm gonna use the little needle nose pliers to get this out so let's go ahead and use this and you want to grab just at the edge of the connector here all right and basically just wiggle it as I kind of pull it just like all the other connectors and there we go came out very nicely all right let's go ahead and zoom back out a bit you got this connector here. I'm guessing this is for the LCD or LVDS, um, which is for the screen. All right, we're gonna peel this adhesive tape up if we can. Man, this is, why is it so difficult to get under there? All right, let me use my tweezers. Gotta be careful here because there's all these little components. Okay, so we're gonna peel this up. There we go. I was trying to be very careful not to touch any of those components while I was peeling that up. And now that we got the tape peeled up, I'm going to use my fingernails again, somewhat at the wings of the connector, and then kind of just wiggle it to pull it back, and there we go. So we got that connector out. All right, what else do we got to get out? It looks like this is attached somewhat to the fan. Or I guess it's not really attached to the fan, but they have all this uh, tape adhesive and stuff over it, so... I might have to peel all of that out. All right, let's go ahead and get that stuff out. I'm gonna actually put the SSD back in here. Um, actually, maybe I shouldn't because that thing goes there. So let me put the screw there just so I don't lose it. Okay, since this cable goes underneath, I'm gonna leave that separate. All right, let's go ahead and peel up this cable here. So this cable has all these adhesives on it. I'm gonna hold the heat sink down while I slowly peel this up. You want to be very careful not to bend these pipes. Okay, and here you can see this foam is kind of in the way, so we're going to peel that back. All right, peel that off from the connector and slowly peel this up as well. Again, we're going to pull the connector away from that adhesive and separate it. Just like this. There we go. And then the last piece, peel that and get that cable out. There we go. All right, what else do we got to do here? We got a lot of screws in here that we're going to have to remove, I think. So, all right. Let's go ahead and remove the wireless antennas. So we're going to go to the left side here. We got the wireless card here and there's a piece of tape on top. I don't know why they put all this tape everywhere, but let's go ahead and remove this. Wait a minute, okay, yeah, the SSD was there. So let's peel this up. Did I? There was no SSD on this one. So there's two M.2 SSD slots, it looks like. And yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up these antennas. So you got the grayish white one on number one and then the black one on number two, which is the main antenna. So let's go ahead and pull this up. They have the arrows that are matching. Black arrow goes to the black one and the White arrow goes to the whitish gray. All right, get out of my way adhesive or tape. All right, so we pulled it up by the tails and then we're gonna go over here and same like the other, we're gonna peel this up slightly to get 
the cables out from under there. And they have this tape here just like the other side, so we're going to peel that up. Again, I'm going to just peel it up from this side so that I can get the thing out and leave the adhesive in place. Okay, just like that. And then the last adhesive there. Peel that up as well. And there we go. All right, so next thing, let's see, what else do we gotta remove? I'll use this water here just in case. So I'm not gonna remove the wireless card. There's just one screw there. Um, and it is also PH1 JS1. All right, let's go ahead and start removing the motherboard screws. So there's one here. They have a little arrow pointing at it. So you can kind of tell where the screw came from. Again, keep the screws in order so that you know where they came from. There's another screw up here. Again, there's also an arrow pointing to that as well. Get that out. Oh, my brother's home. All right, there's one screw all the way up here. Remove that one as well. Okay, so we got three screws up this row. I'm gonna move our way over to the right. Oops, hopefully you can actually see. I removed one screw up there. I don't know if you saw that, so let's zoom out a little bit more. So we got the one screw down here, the one screw here, and then the one screw up here. Okay, so those three. Um, don't forget to disconnect this cable. This is the power switch cable. That looks very difficult to put back in. I don't know how I'm going to get that in once I pull that out, but we'll find out. All right, so let's see here. We're going to keep working our way over to the right. And are there any other screws holding it in place? There aren't many screws holding this motherboard down. That's kind of nice, I think. So let's see, we got one screw here, the top right of the fan. Got another screw down here on the bottom right of the fan. Okay, and then we got another screw all the way down at the bottom here. Okay, and I'm not seeing any other screws, so I'll be surprised if that's all the screws that are in here. Let's see, at least that are holding the motherboard down. All right, can we lift this up? What's this plastic piece on top here? So I don't know why there's a plastic piece on top here, if that's part of the motherboard or... Okay, it looks like it's stuck to the motherboard. Um, hmm. I don't really see any other screws holding the motherboard down into place. So... Um, I guess we'll try and lift it. But I don't know, it doesn't seem to want to move. So I'm lifting this slightly here. Let's actually get the speaker here out of the way. So I'm going to lift this up and out and just swing it over. This cable actually runs along um, to the other speaker over here. So it runs along the bottom. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what's holding this motherboard into place. Do I just need to use more force or... I don't know. I don't want to break anything. I don't know if the liquid is hold like dried and stuck to it on the bottom or what. There's little raised uh, bumps there that kind of help hold it in place, but I don't know if that's what's holding it down. I don't see anything else here. Okay, it is popping out. I think it is the liquid. It's just dried under there and making it stuck. So I'm going to try and lift it up however I can. Yeah, it sounds like the liquid is dried under. Let's go ahead and try and pull the fan up here. Okay. Oh man, I think that liquid made it really stuck in there. So we're lifting this up here. These fans are kind of moving around. I don't know if you can actually pull them out without taking out the whole heat sink, but uh, we're gonna continue working our way over. It's kind of lifting, as you can see. This side, come on, there we go. Okay, so it looks like these fans, you might actually be able to, yeah, you can actually take these fans out uh, without taking out the whole computer or without taking out the whole motherboard. So if your main interest was getting under here to clean this, because here it's kind of, you can see this is where the liquid kind of got to it and it left these little gray dots here. <laughs> So I'm going to kind of try and just clean that off. 
you do want to be careful because it is still connected. The fan is connected. Where is it plugged in? Oh, that's messed up. So they hide the connector underneath the heatsink here. So it's pretty tough if you have to remove the heatsink. Um, then, or if you want to remove the fan, it'll be, I think you'll most likely have to remove the heat sink. But anyways, let's go ahead and try and clean this. At least if you need to just clean it, it's okay because you can get in here and do that. All right, let's go ahead and see the other fan and see if it has a similar issue. So we'll go on the fan here and we're going to try and lift it up from the little tab here. There we go. It's lifting and it's wiggling okay I don't know it's trapped under two sides okay no it's not trapped under this side so we're gonna lift it up now and then just like before because a part of it tucks underneath here I think we're gonna swing it backwards a little swing it over to the right and there we go so we got this one out here you can see there's also some stuff here I think it's tea it smells like tea I think all right so we'll clean that out as well there's more of those little gray dust dots that got stuck to it. Clean that out as well. Okay. So we got most of that out. Alright. Let's go ahead and use the toothbrush and kind of scrub out the junk there. So this fan's not as bad. The other side was a lot worse. Alright, so we got all of that cleaned up. Now we're going to have to try and get the motherboard up. Again, um, it looks like the spill is actually causing it to get stuck here. So let's see what we can do. We're going to lift from the left side first. Looks like it's coming up. And we're going to work our way over slowly. Okay, it looks like it's coming out. So this connector is very difficult to get to. I'm going to try with the needle nose pliers to get it out. So I'm going to grab the blue piece and pull that back. There we go. And that's the power button connector. So again, if you can't reconnect that, you're not gonna be able to turn your computer on. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue lifting this up. I would think normally this motherboard would be easy to lift up, but because of the liquid spill, that's what's making it difficult, all right? So it looks like you actually lift it up this way, so it tilts up like that, all right? And then let's go ahead and see if we can lift this out. It's still somewhat stuck. Here we go, so I'm lifting it up here and then I'm pulling it out towards myself. And wow, look at that, that's really bad. So the motherboard itself was actually relatively easy to get out. I would assume if you didn't have a spill, it would be very easy to remove and clean up. So let's go ahead and clean this out. Wow, that's really bad. Okay, so they have these this little hole here, and all the liquid just um, went through that little hole. It looks like the customer was telling me that the keyboard has kind of a uh, spill-resistant keyboard, but that's a lie. Um, so ASUS, they, they, in their writing, I mean, I guess it, if you drip a little bit, it's okay. Or maybe I'm thinking of a different customer, because <laughs> I had one customer that told me they, they had a spill-resistant keyboard, so... Yeah, yeah, this smells like honey lemon tea or something. All right, so underneath here, there's a little bit of corrosion. I don't know if I can really clean that that well. Let's see, we'll lift up that latch. Put it back down. Okay, I'm going to use the toothbrush just to kind of clean up those pins a little. That worked, all right. Okay, so gotta be careful with the SSD. Clean that up. All right, so I think we are good as far as here goes. Hopefully the keyboard, everything works okay. At first he was telling me some keys weren't working and then later he said they started working. So yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and, oops. That cable stuck under there. There we go. So this is, well, there's still some residue. Okay, make sure it's all nice and clean under here. Let me get a new piece of paper towel because that one's getting a little gross. Okay, let's 
some more water on there. Alright, and we'll clean this up. Looking good, looking good. Well, there was a huge stain under here, so I'm worried the motherboard is going to have some bad stuff, but we'll find out. Alright, so we'll set the rest of the computer aside. Let's go ahead and flip the motherboard over and see what we're dealing with here. Alright, I'm going to try and tuck the fans under here again. Just so they're not moving all over the place. There's some lint on there. Oops. Get back over there. Alright, so we're going to swing this back over this way. And, oh, it doesn't stay in any ways. It's going to keep, like, falling out. At least that's what it looks like. go. All right, let's get this one back under there. This plastic tab needs to end up on top. There we go. Okay, yeah, it's going to keep flipping all over the place until I get all the screws back in. But So we're just going to hold the fans as we flip it over. And wow, here you can see all the liquid residue or whatever went on there that got it all screwed up. So I'm going to get some more water on the paper towel and let's try and clean this off so I don't know if I should peel up this adhesive thing here this helps with heat I think so let's go ahead and clean this well I maybe should lift it up just to see if any of the components under there got messed up I believe this is underneath the video card so that's damaged then it likely will have some video card damage all right so this piece here this metal tape um, oops sorry this metal tape here looks like a RAM module that's soldered to the board so yeah you only can replace one stick of RAM on this model which kind of sucks so we'll clean that up and we'll clean this up All right, so I don't really see too much more liquid. There's a tiny bit. Let's clean all of that, actually. So there's some residue over here as well. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but yeah, it definitely cleaned off. Sorry, my head's going to be constantly going over the camera or in the way of the camera. Oh, this USB port was disgusting. So I'll clean that. Hopefully the USB port still works. The pins themselves look, or at least the connection here looks okay. I'm going to have to look inside on once I put it all back together. Uh, get all of that. There's a tiny bit right there. We'll clean that as well. And then on this side, there's a little bit. So clean that. Okay, let's see here. Is there any other liquid residue damage here. Sorry, I'm like looking at, let me zoom out actually so you guys can see better. So I'm just looking at the motherboard to see if there's any weird circuits that are, okay, there's a little bubble on there. Let me actually see if you can even see that. I don't think you'll be able to see that. On here. So yeah, there's a little shiny bubble. Let's see if we can clean that off. Nope. So, I don't know. I actually cleaned off a tiny bit. Cleaned off completely. There we go. All right. So, that all came out. Let's go ahead and zoom back out again. I don't know what you were able to see because I was like focusing on trying to clean it. So, my head's like right over the top. All right. I'm going to have to hold this up close to myself so that I can see better. And see if I see anything else. I see random like splotches of like dried liquid residue. Um, so we're gonna have to clean that. There's a little bit over here. I can clean that as well. I'm gonna have to like switch another paper again, I think. But let's go ahead and dry that. Clean that and dry that. All right, we'll use the toothbrush to help break up any residue remaining once I wipe it. There's a little residue down here, so I'll clean that as well. 
looks okay. There's a little bit of stuff on these fins, but can't really do much about that. Okay, where else? I remember seeing a little bit more in other spots here. Like all along here, it's just a little like cloudy looking. It's not as glossy as it should be. So, okay, so we're gonna continue checking. Right, there's only a tiny bit more. All right, so there's a little bit right up here. So we're gonna clean that. All right, make sure it's all dried up and separated. And then there's a bunch at the bottom edge here that it's a little bit hard to see, but we're gonna clean that off as well. In between these LEDs and over here. Okay, hopefully their whole motherboard is okay because there was liquid residue all over this whole thing. Alright, make sure it's all broken up so that there's no connections. Let's try this. The one nice thing is I think I think whatever they spilled, it's either diet or unsweetened. Um, so the stuff didn't leave like really sticky residue. Um, once I clean it, it's actually nice and clean again. Oh, actually, there's a lot of um, residue here, so let's clean that as well. It's hard to see it. I have to tilt it at a certain angle to get the lighting to see where the stuff spilled. All right, I think oh, there's a little more here. Once I tilt the board, then I can kind of see it again. There's some more down here. But yeah, luckily it wasn't like a sugary drink, so it's actually not um, forming like sticky gunk all over the board as I clean it. Sugar is very hard to clean. When sugar gets on it, then it starts like just making everything sticky. All right, I'm gonna see if I can peel this up and see what underneath looks like just in case. So let's go ahead and try and peel this thingy off. Usually this kind of adhesive, when you peel it up, it's not going to stick back down. So we'll see here. All right. Oh, they put a plastic sheet on top. So that's good. Actually, there's no, there's no gross stuff under here. So at least I don't see any. And then they have this uh, carbon sheet here that's supposed to help transfer heat. So let's make sure that that sticks down well. All right, so we get that all stuck back down. I don't think I lined it up right. So we're gonna pull it as tight as possible over. Okay, well, that's as good as I can get it. Get that all so that everything is nice and connected. And we should be good to go. I don't see any other residue, so um, let's go ahead and reassemble. Actually, let me check the bottom cover here. So this stuff, you can see it's somewhat stained. So I'm gonna use a paper towel with some more water and see if we can clean up that staining. But uh, it might end up just staying there. Okay, so. Oops, I'm going out of view of the camera. So we're just going to clean this stuff and see if that residue comes out. But other than that, I think we're okay. So this, whatever that stain is, it doesn't want to completely come out or it's really tough. Okay, there we go. So that's good. Let's go ahead and check the main board again. All right, again, this looks pretty good. There's still some residue from when I cleaned it earlier because the water evaporates and then it leaves behind a tiny bit of that residue, but it doesn't look too bad. Okay, probably have to just use a, oops, let me zoom out a bit here. So I'll just use the dry cloth and wipe it before it evaporates and hopefully that will get rid of most of that residue looking stuff. Is 
that dot. Okay, there was a dried up dot right there, so we clean that off. And there's still some up here. All right, so for the most part, I think we're good. This, whatever this is right here, isn't really coming out. So that's like actually melted plastic, I think. All right, so I'll clean this. Oh, there's a little here. I'll clean that as well. It's a brown dot there. Got it, all right. And then we got, this is where that one USB port that ha was really bad. Uh-oh, my phone overheated. 